hello, 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 and welcome to the Rag Company Podcast. I have coffee in my throat, sorry for that. I'm Dane Hennon. To my right, Levi Gates. What's up, Dane? And joining us by the magic of the internet, Anthony Fisher, via his phone or laptop. Anthony, I just want to say, great backdrop you got going there. I see a little green kind of behind the TV, it appears. Magic or is us. that just our monitor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's almost yeah, no, like he's no, in the other actually, room. It's actually- I did set this up for this occasion. I figure, you know, oh. Christmas spirit, you know, we want to get things going here. You got so our got Pepsi, Pepsi sponsor. Shirt on. Very nice. You I know, like it. It's, it. You know, life's good, guys. I, I mean, I really can't complain. But, I mean, the thing is about Christmas, right? It's, Christmas is all about, you know, spreading holiday cheer, happiness, you know, maybe uh, surprising mm-hmm. people with certain gifts and certain yeah. sweet treats to be able to eat. Oh, so I don't have any my favorite sweet things. treats near me. Oh, I, I don't know about yeah. you guys. We have I mean. a lot of great <clears throat> things. Thank you for asking. Well, so, yeah. Anthony, some I of the ask. fun stuff that we have that we're going to be eating and enjoying is, wow. well, for one, John Stout, friend of the program, has provided some of his world famous peanut brittle for Dane, apparently. It just says feed to Dane first. That lol. is massive. And then one bag can go to the shipping department. So Dane's got a whole bag of wow. peanut brittle for himself to enjoy. Thank you, John. This bag, we're actually just going to give away to the oh. shipping team. So sorry, have, Anthony. Have you Hopefully, stuck your uh, hand in that? You might not be able to get some of that. <clears throat> then, hmm. uh, I don't know if you know anything about John Stout's peanut brittle, though, Anthony. Do you? I apparently I do. So, oh. so John sort of actually gave me some 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 history on this. Apparently, oh. this is a peanut oh. brittle passed down by generations. It actually started in the late 1700s, where his family, right, basically invented this recipe. It's it's extremely soft. It's supposed to not be overly sweet, uh, and it's not supposed to break your teeth. And now, um, there was actually a small uh, civil war started by this peanut brittle, believe it or not. And so, most people what? don't realize this. Um, yes, exactly. You know, so, um, it was actually leaving Great Britain, right? It was it, it, in that, in that time period of, you know, of, of people trying to make the trip and, and get out of Great Britain, there was a small civil war, uh, somewhere between, uh, <clears throat> London and, um, what's that place that we went to, uh, Levi? Where? Um, Covington. Oh. <laughs> yes. Coventry. It was Covington. Coventry. Coventry, yes. There, there yeah, was a small, in the north. So, so John Stout, you know, he, he may not know of his English heritage as much as I know of his, um, but oh, okay. basically there was a small civil war that happened between uh, those two areas over this peanut brittle. So oh. um, anyway, so Dean, enjoy. Historic There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears um, yeah. in, in, in this Men peanut brittle. Literally blood. So, so yeah, men died for that. They, so That recipe. That I is think true. that might affect the flavor. <laughs> okay, well, enjoy um, some of that. While you partake <clears throat> of some of that, yeah. I'd like to point out that uh, our very own G. Davis... His uh, beautiful bride, Kim, has provided a number of Coco's finest creations, which is a little business his wife runs, uh, in which she makes delicious baked goods for all of us. And Anthony, she she has provided a number of these delightful dipped, chocolate dipped pretzels and uh, some chocolate, chocolate dipped Oreos, just like you asked for right here. Yeah, I'm going to try and eat most of them before you get here. That way you don't get to have any. Of them. And I'll leave you some of the blue ones that you like so much. So that's going to be My that'll favorite. be really great. So That's great. These that's are good. chocolate dipped super sick. rice crispy treats. So I'm very excited about those. Dane, how's that peanut brittle coming? Honestly, I'm surprised at how much I like this. I'm normally not a big peanut brittle guy. But that's usually because peanut brittle tends to be yeah, your mom's is out there like chewing a brick. Yeah, it's it's just totally uh, yeah. not your, your, your mom great made experience. peanut brittle, and it's totally this, different. However, so we've had a nice ability. This to, is like to light test. and flaky. Yeah, it breaks it's apart very, soft. very easily. It's very friendly to uh, you know your teeth. So I really like that. Oh, very. I nice. could see why there was a war fought over this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Makes what side are you on? Harder soft. Can you go kind of walk? Hmm. Can you kind of walk us through this? I mean, in terms of, of overall texture, in terms of like flavor, what would you say this is most similar to for you, Dane? Similar Does it taste to? colonial? Does it taste very colonial in, in the sense that it is, is an old recipe? I'm, I'm going to be honest, it, it tastes a lot better than any food we had in the UK. UK was a horrible disappointment when it came to ordinary food. But 
I, I love I, that you're actually rolling with this story. I just have to lay that out there because, <laughs> my lord, some some folks just like totally forgot how to season their food or something. Really? But at any rate, oh, I had they, a delicious time. They just don't time. believe in salt. There, they just don't. They just don't use salt. Yeah, it's the strangest thing. I'm not a like a salt everything kind of fan, but boy, a little would be nice. <laughs> I'm a salt everything kind of man. <laughs> like I, I enjoy salt. Like Gary, my very own stuff, salt with but me. At, that's yeah. Got to watch out. This, however, I gotta say, this is really good. I like the texture. I like the layers. It feels kind of like almost uh, like a wafery kind of layer, even though it's not wafers. It's just the way it breaks apart is so flaky and light. It's way more pleasant than I think anything I else say, I would have expected. And I might get fired for saying this. Uh oh. Okay. I kind of like this okay. more than your mom's peanut barrel. You know what? Wow. You know what? Wow. I think she might agree that's, if she that's, had that's, some. That's... Should we give some to Carolyn? Well, what we should do is we blindfold her and say, which one is your peanut brittle? Oh, Am I right? She'd probably she... know. Yeah, hers tastes yeah, different than this. Hers is much sweeter. I love my mom. Has more of a she can do flavor. no wrong. No. <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> this peanut brittle, yeah, mm. it's it's pretty great. So sorry, Anthony, uh, you're the not kids, gonna be able as to the ki- as, that. as the kids would say, uh, that this peanut brittle slaps. It does. And Jimmy would say something like that, right? You know, Jimmy is in his youth. This peanut brittle goes hard in the paint. Things. All right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> now that we've addressed that, I want to point out because I feel like I said this before, maybe last week or somewhere in my mind, but I want to drop it for everybody who's watching now and wasn't aware, we will be doing a QA Thursday this week. So it's that's a special be Christmas happening. episode. We actually have a couple gifts yeah. that we've been saving to that's open true. on our Christmas Eve episode. Yeah. We've been holding the off until then, but yeah. boy, it's going to be a close one. So, guys, it's going to be Thursday, like it always is, but it's a half day for us here at work. Hallelujah. We get a half day. Um, but that means the show's going to happen a little bit earlier in the day. So, yep. instead of our normal 2 p.m., sure. it'll be 10 a.m. And just remember that's Mountain Standard Time. We're going time. 10 to noon in the we'll morning, to Mountain we'll do Standard two Time. two hours, just like we always and then do. we're just going to go home after that. Everything great. else will be normal. It's just getting pushed earlier in the day so that we can all go and enjoy time at home with our families or, uh, you know, quarantine, depending on our situation. So, yeah, uh, good yeah, stuff. Yeah. That's basically it. So, uh, yeah. excited for that. Also, mm-hmm. look at these great little boxes that we I got like on our that. desks. So what's this in was, these? I saw this so, on my desk this morning. So these are from our friends at PNS. Okay. And some of the stuff they gave us that I know Anthony's excited about is this oh. new sticker. The 60th it's anniversary. It's the best sticker. I've been seeing that going around. Pretty dope. It's a flat finished sticker. It feels very it nice. It's yeah. very nice. It's very premium. Then they gave us, uh, let me hide this here, tube tops. Um, Woo! Put that on. This so, is so like Levi. Those aren't. <clears throat> those are. That's a gator. Oh, okay. That's a gator. So, oh wow. Here, I, got, here I thought it was an armband, and I got, got a little worried. Masks, so that'll be cool. <laughs> no, I was yeah, gonna wear like, like a tube top. But, no, okay. <laughs> try not to do hmm. that. Uh, really uh, sucks everything in. <clears throat> delightful Christmas card from the PNS it's for a dachshund team. Dachshund is what it's for. <laughs> the whole team signed. Yes. <laughs> so did you see that, Anthony? A nice signed card from the whole PNS oh, team. Oh, that's awesome. That's nice. Very nice. So we got that. They do like us. And they then, really uh, like last us. but not least, the new Ooh. PNS Yeti mug Ooh. with the logo, two logos. So it's got the PNS logo and the 60 year anniversary logo on there. Wow. So, okay, that feels pretty wow. exciting. Actually, that doesn't. Oh, it's a Yeti. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't feel cheap. That's this actually not cheap. pretty. This is a nice mug. Substantial feeling. And the texture on it's interesting. It feels kind of rubberized. Yeah, it's almost nice. leathery, but not leather. It just has that. Feel I'm to very it. excited about wow. this. Wow, Peanut, that's pretty freaking Thanks, guys. Awesome. Appreciate it. So now I got a second coffee mug. Sweet. Yeah. So we got some great, uh, great little gifts. Oh, that's so, awesome. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, and obviously, nice. thank you to G. Davis. Thank you to oh. Stout for all this stuff. I mean, it's it's a veritable cornucopia of food yeah. and treats, and you know, it's it's just the beginning Man, of the week. Feels good we to aren't be even, at work. We aren't even to the twenty fifth yet. Feels good to be at work. We're not even you to know? the part on the twenty fourth where you get to maybe open one president if your parents are you know treating you yeah. well and they're like, hey, Plus, you know I what? what you Anthony, how are free. you feeling at home? <clears throat> you be enjoying oh God, all these man. great presents and stuff that we've got going on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you got? So, What's happening you know, at your place? What's clapping in, um, Anthony? Uh, Maybe give us a little really bit bad. of a uh, little 
Maybe maybe some of this a little bit of you know. Why do you want him to clap? I, don't, I, don't, I think I think a little applause is in order for for Anthony. I don't okay. know why I feel this way. I just think maybe if we all clap together, is something gonna happen. Maybe. Oh, I'm really, hold I'm on. really trying oh, here. You yeah. Need to do, oh, you, you need, need to push to a you. button to do it. Never mind. Okay, there it is. That's all I wanted. People over here yeah. thinking I'm weird, like, Clyde, what's he <laughs> talking about? I yeah, have, there you go, Anthony. <laughs> I have these music-activated LED lights back behind uh, my TV. Oh, nice. I also put them underneath my desk. They're pretty sweet. And uh, I, I did it out of the kind of Christmas spirit, right? Kind of lively, liven things up a little bit, make it kind Best of feel day. like I'm there with you guys, you know, sitting in the podcast room since <clears> I'm not. And, uh yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll show you a little for a little bit of red, maybe a little green. I don't oh, know. Yeah, we'll go green. I think green just just kind of vibes the best. So yeah, we'll stick with that. Nice. Thirteen like bucks, it. man. Amazon. Could like beat it. it. So what I'm hearing no. is we need to hook these lights up behind us to match the levels of the system in there, and then we'll just have like a light show. Ooh. Every time you say something a little louder, it gets a little brighter. Speak a little quietly, it gets a little dimmer. Very nice. And then if you freak out, <laughs> I'm getting very loud no's from the control room. <laughs> so uh, let's get this party yeah, started. Yeah, why don't Now, first bit of house cleaning, the uh, sale. six days of Christmas sale is still going on. I think today or tomorrow is the last day. It is. It is. And, um, well, uh, technically, I think, no, I think yesterday was the last day. Cause last yesterday? Day was the final, um, I think it was yesterday, yeah. Yesterday was the last day? That's great. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, sorry, thank sorry. you to everybody who signed up, bought stuff, <laughs> got stuff, utilized the sale to the best of your ability. Uh, the team is uh, feverishly finishing packing, getting all your gifts out to you. The goal was so we could get those. I think the goal was to end it today or yesterday so that we could get everything shipped today. So that way we can make sure that most of those final products could get to you before Christmas. That was our reasoning for it. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people were wondering why we didn't keep going with the sale or why we don't have the sale going on closer to Christmas Eve. Um, but the whole goal is to try and make it as appropriate and get it to you in case you're buying a present for a loved one or a family member or something. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, second, uh, rags to riches gallons. That's right. We have them. Now, we did see a lot of folks wondering when the 32-ounce bottles were going to be back in stock. And, uh, well, we're hoping that they are back in stock as well as soon as possible um, we're expecting sometime, hopefully this week, maybe next week. I swear, you guys yeah. want what you can't have. First, yeah. we have the 32 ounce. Where's the gallon? And we got a gallon. Where's well, the 32 so ounce? We the tried deal. to give it to you. Here's the deal. The first <laughs> batch of rags to riches, <clears throat> yeah. we split. Right. Where we said we're going to do this yeah. many 32 ounce bottles and this many gallons. Because we knew we needed both because and we knew PNS, people were going to have And PNS said, okay. So they bottled all the 32s, packaged, labeled, packaged, everything, then put them on the, in the boxes and shipped them to us, then changed over the line because they're making all these in-house, put them yep. in the gallons, filled up the remainder into gallons, and now they have just uh, gotten a secondary line built for these products, and the goal is to yep. start running dual lines so that everything's there. Because this is a very production. unique bottle, so it, it needed some changing and some tooling built. Sure. To do yeah. that. So, so we're hopefully in the future we're going to have a continuation of both. But we also had to remake a whole new batch of yeah of product at PNS. Dave worked on another to make another round because he builds these massive yeah vats, ga ga thousands of gallons of product, and then as they bottle it, package it sends it out so you know what though i am extremely happy to hear the feedback we've been getting yeah. so far from people who have actually tried it i know i've heard several good stories anthony have you seen stuff because i've been kind of sleuthing around on the internet using my like forum searching tools and oh, just Friday. to see what's sleuthing. out there sleuthing. 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 Doing a little bit of sleuthing little i just want to see right well, it's it's, it's like being hanging from a branch right it's, it's like being kind of hanging from a tree watching I'm pulling. Windows. I'm pulling the like nature <laughs> photographer approach, which is don't let the animals see you. You just need to check and like, okay, they are in fact following their normal migration patterns. This yeah. is cool. Oh, that one had something interesting to say about the detergent they recently purchased. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> just moving hey, along. What are these animals doing using detergent? Why are these animals doing this? And why are you well, out in nature? 
as you know, use detergent. many animals have coats, and those coats Dane, we don't need wash to be our dogs with the. I don't cleaned. know. What you're not, not supposed to use rags for that. Yeah, All Dane, right, okay. I've dragged this far now. We got no, off the no. Rails we here. we need to just like <laughs> nix that right now. But so, the point is, I've heard a lot of really good things, that, and I love kinda, seeing that. I appreciate party. that. Unbiased. I will say we got there. lots of friends all over Europe that are chomping oh, at the bit dying to, to get, a get hold of it. rags to riches in yeah. hand. And uh, it, it's I did a it's podcast true. on Friday with Tommy Ronsing of uh, uh, Detail Podden or Inside the Detailed Mind podcast. Uh. Uh, and he was, yeah. he was, we were, we talked a lot about rags to riches and how that came about. Yeah. So uh, he's very interested. I know rag company Europe. Patrick is just waiting for a lot it. of folks John Holes very just waiting for towels. it, clean and shiny. Just, I mean, they're just ready to sell it. And so bags soon, sitting off to the side in the garage, like, all right. Yeah. Well, soon as our SDSs are approved to be able to ship yeah. this over the ocean, ladies and gentlemen, you will get it. Yeah. And uh, we're just as yeah. excited for the rest of the world to get it. So hopefully you'll have it soon. I promise we'll we are trying to get it out to you as soon as possible. Yeah. It's not for lack of trying. It's just so you move at the speed of regulation. <laughs> Dane, what'd you do this weekend? Um, well, I was quarantined. Oh, uh, okay, that's fine. Ki- kind of, sort of, because I didn't know for sure if I had COVID. It was more a matter of like, well, let's not take any unnecessary risks. So we were figuring out, all right, kind of lay low, hang out in my home office, Your work bunker. from there. Yeah, my bunker, I guess. It has nice windows and stuff, though, so mm-hmm. yeah, it is what it is. But did the Q&A from right, uh, we'll talk my, about my that. bedroom. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can yeah. see my dog in the background. But everybody seemed to love her, so that was okay. Um, Dane, she there. was putting on a show. I <laughs> mean, was. typically you have to pay money for what we were seeing. Did, did not so ask for was, that was... at all. <laughs> <laughs> The, the oh, point I like that you actually had to turn her around. <laughs> I literally got up at one point because Anthony's like, Dane, I can't even. It's right by your head. And I'm like, I know, yeah. but it's in the background. Nothing finer oh, okay. than that, right? Yep. Because it's a funny little thing. We used to do our group calls using Zoom so you could yep. like do a virtual background, easy, hide everything behind you. Very useful in a messy room. My room wasn't that messy, but there was a dog behind me. And, of course, people want to see the dog, and we're using a different system, so I can't just push a button and make it disappear. She's right there, and she's just splayed out for all to see. It's like, all right, girl, you can maybe move along, pupo. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, very sweet dog, and really, uh, everybody seemed really to show friendly. some love. Just friendly. So that's that. But <laughs> other than that, uh, got some time in playing uh, the Xbox, the new Series X, enjoying mm. that. Very much so. I'm uh, still sorry yeah. I must, couldn't must get nice. Anthony one, but yeah. <sighs> when in Rome, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, enjoying. No, no, I don't know. I don't know what that means at all, Dane. I don't know about when in Rome. I no gave you does. the directions to it's Rome. It's provocative. I gave all you right. the directions <laughs> to Rome. <laughs> you did, and uh, I saw fit to, uh, yeah, take care of that. <laughs> so enjoy. Uh, I actually think I beat cyberpunk last night by accident like i didn't mean to finish the game think already that's and impossible. i was like jeez that you, how did you do that Dave? how long did you how did play you do it that, Dean? How, how did, did you... you play it technically yeah. from the time i started to now i've spent maybe 22 23 hours in the game like here and there but since when it's been like a week or two but point is Ended up beating it, and you it bought like, it on oh, Monday. That's it. But there's like a million Monday side quests and stuff, so I didn't finish that. So it was less than a week. Well, okay, that would have been the weekend. Yeah, I did spend a lot of time last <laughs> weekend playing it. But <clears throat> point being, Dean, is that is that why you slept in this morning? Because you were up all night playing. No, actually, Cyberpunk? last night I was at my parents' house, and we had ourselves a nice little like. Decorate the tree night, watch a little show, listen to some, you know, jazzy, you know, mm. Ramsey Lewis kind of Christmas Delightful. music. And had to be stroganoff yeah. dinner. It was very nice. Mm. But no, I was nice. passed my wife's out. Favorite. Stroganoff. That's yeah. one of my wife's Dang. favorite meals. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. our that my wife and I have uh what we call um death row meals. Oh yeah. It's a last meal you last could ever meal. have. Yeah. Right? Hers is beef stroganoff that her mm. mom makes. And mine is meatloaf. And oh. meatloaf. I knew I knew mm-hmm. it was gonna be meatloaf. I knew it yeah. was. Meatloaf well with Levi, if it's, it's not that. the artist, it's the food. So yeah. yeah. So what are yeah. uh, 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 death row meal? What's I'll do guys? anything for love, man, but I won't do <laughs> yeah. that. Beef yeah. stroganoff is one of my classic ones. Like yeah. from a kid, that's when my mom makes it, is yeah. because she knows how much I love it. I like chicken Alfredo. Mm. That's another big one. So for what me. would be your one if you had to have yeah. one before you died? 
I had to add one. Oh boy. It would be it would be a, a feast of sorts, but I think oh. it would it would include chicken alfredo. Okay. Yeah. All right. And there would be a cheesecake at the end. Okay. okay. Nice. Anthony? The last thing I ever ate was cheesecake. I'm okay. Oh with that. man. See that's, <laughs> that's pretty tough for me, man. God, that's pretty tough for me because I would want to go out with something pretty pretty unhealthy. I mean basically. Yeah. I mean I'm not trying to you know, I'm not trying to eat something. Super I know, healthy. that's what I'm saying. You just <laughs> yeah, you don't what have are you to do that. It for? You're on death yeah. row. So it's you're, the last you're meal your body's gonna enjoy yeah. before you're into the great beyond. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what would release the most serotonin when I, mm. uh, when they, you know. Yeah. You know, me, right? And so I'm yeah. thinking maybe going with some type what of. What like, era is he imagining this story. happening in? He did this, and it sounds like he's like being put into a guillotine or something. Dane, you never know. So, Dean, I actually, I actually prefer, you know, old school methods of, you know. Ha, jokes on you, Anthony. We're going to the Bastille. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I just you know the gulag is what I would prefer to be in, um, as some of the kids would say. Well, so, that's, um, no, that's a I holding, find a good that's goulash a holding also delicious. Kind of place, but yeah, it's a holding pattern to fight for survival, Dane. That's what I yeah. would like to do. What was that movie where you didn't actually um, like where basically we'd have to fight at the very end, right, to see if they could survive? Kind of like Gamer with uh, death what's race? his name in it. Is it Death um, Race? Kind of like Death Race. Yeah, kind of like Death Race. I think that would be like that would be like a very similar I mean, if you're talking like, like The Running in. Man is a classic. Running right? Man's great. Yeah. Love The Running, running Man. Running Man so, is great as well. So you don't have anything. Hmm. You don't have a single no, dish so, that you would so, eat. Okay. Like he think wings of it right from now. the from the partition <sighs> bar in Socrates. Oh man, that Ooh. would be so good. So so maybe if I had like the wings from the partition bar right, as kind of like an appetizer, mm. right? Um, and then I would like some very, like, I would like some, like, sashimi, but, like, uh, not as, like, my meal, but as, like, a second appetizer, okay. if I can have that. Okay. Some okay. kind of, like, just because I want You can have whatever you want. There. It's your final meal. Mm-hmm. Well, and then I would like to jump into probably something, um, like, a really good, like, a tomahawk steak, right? Mm-hmm. But I want, like, a tomahawk steak, but I also want that with some type of sauce, you know, on the side, right? With some type of, like, um... I don't know what you would what you would call that, but some kind of like creamy sauce with some good zest to it. And then, um, I don't really know what I want. What I, what I would want after that? Actually, that's it. I don't know. I think that would be good. <laughs> that's all right. Maybe some yeah. brownies. I I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I wish I wish I was more. That's no, all right. that's just... fine. See, it's hard if you haven't been thinking yeah. about it. What we know around the office is when Anthony's here, he's always asking these kinds of questions. Yeah, so that's kind of his thing. So, you know, to catch what them off guard like that is rare. Trying to bring the little flavor back. So, yeah. well, well, I because I think about this stuff before I usually ask you. Right. And so the, the fact that you kind of threw this out there out of nowhere, I, I feel like I wasn't you. prepared enough. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't prepared enough to give you a good, solid answer. What I like right. about so. these questions, though, is when you ask them this way, a lot of times people will actually pause and get really concerned to feel like, I have to get the right answer. Like, to, yeah. Oh, no, because, you know, they're suddenly, like, very aware of their own mortality. So why do we and do they're this? like, this is it. Why this is all I get. Um, uh, and they, yeah. Here's what we do. <laughs> Rag Company Podcast Discussion Group. Mm. New topic. Lay it in there, guys. Death Row la- Final Meal. Okay, I'm going to pin this to the top so that everybody has a chance to yeah. look at it and Tell uh, us, comment on and it. Tell us, and we'll allow you to have two appetizers, a yeah. main course, and a dessert. I, I don't care which of you guys gets to it first to make the post, but just, yeah. you know, populate that post with lots of options. Main course well, and, and, and dessert. And try, we'll do it that way. And try to be yeah. specific. Like, right, like, right. So, like, for example... I mean, like, I feel like Despacho, right, is going to say something like, mm. I want wings from Wingstop. And I'm going to say, you're wrong because you're those a monster. are horrible <laughs> wings, right? right? Those are not real wings. But you're going to say like, wings I mean, from the partition because it's delicious. Well, because, well, yeah. Those yeah. are delicious and homemade. Yes. Yeah, those are, those are some of the best wings in the world. So, yeah, I would say that, like, I want people to be specific on the location of which they would take each appetizer from. Um, and I'll write up something as well, you know, something okay. that I want. So, like... um. Um, there is a, there's actually, so for example, when I said the sashimi, right, there is a place down in LA called Sweet Fish or Sweet Something. It, it's like a famous like sushi type of place. They had the best sashimi I ever had. So hmm. like, that's where I would want it. So I would okay, say, that's I would like wings from the partition, you know, whatever it is, or sashimi from Sweet Fish or the heck that, sugar fish, yeah. I think is what it's called. And then my next meal from wherever else from there, right? And so... 
I like this I'm, I'm idea definitely though, interested of to hear. getting it from different places, like around the country even. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, I want mm-hmm. this yeah, from around this the restaurant. Country. And yeah. that from that restaurant. They have to be air shipped in. I have to make this as inconvenient for the people about to put me down as possible. So well, that's literally all what they the can do. That's, that's uh, Wild caught salmon in Alaska. I want this guy to literally go catch it and bring it back. You know, that kind of thing. Mm, so I like, I, I like that. If you kill this enough people, they'll let you Drive do nuts. <laughs> Because, I do yeah. love salmon, Dane. I am a sucker yeah. for salmon. Honestly, nothing wrong. That with wouldn't that. be that wouldn't be in my meal, but it. I'm actually wanting that today, or perhaps dinner. So okay. you know how they make those plank salmons that you can get from maybe yes. Costco. Maybe I can mm-hmm. order one of those up as like a celebratory fish week. Oh, yeah. I'll start a there fish week. Go. Is that, is, it, is that a thing yeah. that people do? I had shrimp last night. It well, was frozen. Tying it back little, into little cooked. Tying it back into my weekend without really tying it back into my weekend. This coming okay. week, it's a tradition in our household that we do a, like a seafood medley. Seafood fettuccine. Uh, seafood Fantasia. Uh, yeah, you Ooh, could say that. A Fantasia. The day before Christmas, it's the dinner we have. Like a lot of people are like, oh, Christmas dinner is ham or turkey or some other thing, kind of a feasty kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, no, for us, seafood fettuccine. Mm. I don't know wow. why that happened. Actually, I do. Um, well, we it's, had, your, it's your Norwegian it's my heritage. Aunt. Yeah. Well, she actually, she, she came uh, over from uh, Asia and she really oh, loved okay. having, you know, seafood, stuff like that. So we actually did that when she came and visited and it kind of became a thing. It stuck so with now us you're since, yeah. since the 90s at least. So it's been a fun thing in our family to do that every uh, New Year's Eve or New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, no matter who's with us, it's just what we do. Okay. It's always good. My mom yeah. does such a great job with it. And it's really, yeah. I don't know. It, it's one of those things where once it's ingrained, there's no turn it back. Like, yeah. That's it. You love it. And uh, I'm sure Anthony can appreciate that. You know, you're, you're Mr. Like I want seafood kind of guy. So, and I, I don't know about you so much. I'm you're allergic to, a, I'm definitely red, allergic to seafood kind of guy. So yeah, if I yeah. eat seafood, I die. Yeah. Dane. So that, I don't, I don't want you vegetables. getting shellfish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that vegetables and water. I don't drink, yeah. I don't eat seafood. <laughs> I don't eat green vegetables and I don't drink water. Be All selfish. Don't share your that, it's, it's almost yeah, like, it's almost like a, a lifestyle of an, like an aquatic lifestyle that you completely disregard, right? Water, uh, That's my favorite movie, make, make The Life Aquatic. Yeah. I like to shower because <laughs> I like water <laughs> passing over me. <laughs> I don't like to sit in water because then that makes me feel like uh, I'm doing something wrong if I sit yeah. in water. Well, yeah. so you sit in it like yeah, a so pool? Not a not a fan of pools, bathtubs. I'm, I'm all am, right with a hot tub. <laughs> I'm really enjoying the twists and turns this podcast is so. taking in terms of discussion because I feel like we just can't settle on one thing. We're all over the place. So it's well, really fun. So, so here's the deal. Well, what's fun, this is the first non-live podcast that we've filmed in a while. Right, yeah. And I feel like we, I feel, I personally feel like we flow the best in terms of creativity mm. and bouncing around more than our live podcasts because we get a little distracted sometimes. So let With us live, know. You feel comments, like you have you, to yeah. put on a performance for people. You feel like, yeah. oh, I got to do what they want. Whereas for us, it's just, you know, well, we it's the three of us whatever. always hanging yeah. out like it's <laughs> always been. Yeah, well, so. They're poking we us like dance monkey dance. And <laughs> I say, I don't dance like that, man. <laughs> You got to remember the folks that do listen to us, they love to be like part of our group they do. in that yeah. sense. And so, I feel like our discussions, that's what they come here for. So whether or not they find out, you know, I don't like water. Fun fact, uh-huh. I don't know how to physically swim. So that's cool Boy. because yeah. uh, I'm 40 years old. Uh, second, yeah. uh, I do like a good hot tub. Mm. Uh, Anthony and I have sat in a hot tub multiple occasions yes. together uh, and just talked, told great stories. That's um, a wonderful place to do that. Yeah, but... Well, well, and then Dane, what Dane does, Dane waits for us to kind of make a brew in the hot tub, and True. then Dane comes in after us to really kind of just he likes settle this, he likes you know, the that last part of it. That. Well, well, you the, see, the because seasoning. on <laughs> on work <laughs> trips, I tend to be working a little later, and uh, you guys are having your fun, and then I join in at the very end and realize, oh, I'm all by myself again. All Dane, we were saying, time. you should not oh, yeah, yeah, Dane. Because we're getting all pruny waiting for you. (laughs) We're sitting there for like two hours and you finally come out. I was uh, ready to fall. Dis- I almost the drowned. The three of us can only dispense so much water in that thing, right? Yeah. We're all getting yeah, excited well. that the water's going to be overflowing. That's you got to say, you know, we got to 
draw another. Yeah. So it's okay. So, Dane does his own thing in the hot Yeah, room. that's right. Oh, man. So back to uh, the uh, build out of the house. What do you got going on this weekend? What are you doing? Tearing so, any walls down? Got furniture being delivered? Not tearing anything, uh, but furniture is being delivered this week. Oh. Uh, not, Ooh, big not, furniture? not the furniture I ordered or bought. Oh, but someone else ordered it? My my parents are sending me uh, their Christmas gift, which is apparently a piece of furniture that will go in my living room. I'm not 100% sure what it is Do you know what, what it is, it is yet? yet? Wow. So I'm going to find out. Hey, if you want to well, send, gonna find uh, out. if you guys want to <laughs> send Dane some furniture to go in his living room. <laughs> oh, no. You can email me, levithragcompany.com, <laughs> and I will get you his address. Oh, please, no. So that way you can send also oh, send Dane no. some mystery gifts in the what vein the? of his parents. Those guys had the email address ready to kill like that? Oh, mm-hmm. my God. <laughs> okay. They did. So the deal with it is my living room, while open and airy and large, the house itself is not a big house. We're talking like 1,300 square feet-ish. Mm-hmm. So not huge, yeah. but my living room is probably the biggest part of the whole house, wide open. And my folks uh, basically passed me down their couch because it was a really nice couch, but it was just older, a little rough a around the couch. edges and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is a great couch. I love this couch. Loved it because of how comfortable it was. But it is a beast. It is absolutely massive. And I've talked about this in some of our previous podcasts. I was shopping around trying to find some furniture that I thought might be a good replacement. Yeah. Found a good couch at a Scandinavian store that I absolutely loved. So that's going to be replacing the existing couch. However, in the process of moving that, there's a lot of other furniture that's got to go. Because I still have like, you know, when you, you, if it's not moving out of college, it's just moving out of your parents' house. And yeah. like people give you furniture when you start off. Like you have relatives or friends who are like, I don't need this anymore. You need a nightstand. Here's a nightstand. It doesn't match anything. There's a weird light on it. And you're yeah. just like, okay, guess that's that. And you just kind of accrue these things over time just by people yeah. handing it down and not wanting to deal with it themselves. They're like, oh, it's an easy thing. I can just pawn it off on my nephew or pawn it off on you know, a relative, something like that. And I get that. We're like, friends do that too. Like, help me move this thing and you can keep it, you know, because I'm getting a new one, whatever it is. And that's really nice. Like, you appreciate those things when they happen. But 10 years down the road from when you actually did that, you start to go, you know, maybe if I just had some furniture that I bought. You know, just mm. some furniture that's new that yeah. I determined what it it's looked on, like and fit yeah. into the So the you room. decided to do that, yeah. buy all your own stuff, and then your parents thrown a wrench back in, pick <laughs> something that they like that so, they think you would like. All I can hope is that it's going to fit in. I it's have probably no one of their idea. Pieces, it's probably one of their pieces of furniture. What if it's like an outdoor table that they want you to put but inside? But that's the one thing is I know it's not used. It's new, whatever Dang, it is. we got you a hot tub cover. I don't have a hot tub. <laughs> I don't have a hot tub. You well, you got a cover for one. Well, now, now you have to figure it out. Yeah. Better get a hot <laughs> tub. Yeah. reason to buy one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have a hot tub because I don't want that heating bill. But at any rate, just that stuff. Yeah. So I'm curious. I'm very curious. And it's supposed to arrive sometime in the next couple of days. Oh. Liz will be the first to find out. So, oh, that'll be delightful. Yeah, so she's going to answer the door, and whatever shows up, shows up, and let's just hope it fits. <laughs> what if it's a giant tiki head that takes up a good portion <gasps> of your house? You reminded me. Okay, so here's one thing that like I did last night. I was telling my brother, I was like, man, it is so hard trying to figure out what you want, because anything you want, you just get it. You don't bother like trying to be, yeah. If there's something you're interested in, you're just going to get it. So well, I it, have one thing. Not all of us get to do that anymore, Dane, but yes. Well, he, he can do that. <laughs> so have one thing that no one else has that is in my house that has value. And you know the thing. Yeah, is. your tiki bar. So he I wants it. have decided that my brother's Christmas present this year is going to be the tiki bar. Oh, And that's wow. going to help me clear wow. space, which is rough Damn, for me. that's a big deal. That's like your most I, coveted and I am treasured. Mr. Mid-Century Modern. I love that thing so much. It was built but it could in the go, 50s. It could go in your... It in is your new office. A legitimate, beautiful wow. 50s tiki bar in very good condition. No tears in the leather seats, the orange yeah. orange seats on Bamboo. Like it looks so cool, but it's in good shape. Out of the four stools, only one of them has like a crack on the the foot, like part you step mm-hmm. on, the ring. All the others yeah, are in perfect that's condition. Fine. Wow. It's, it's but ties. it's the kind of thing yeah. that could be mended. That's a big deal. And uh I know I it's one of those hard things, like, unless you find the right person to buy that kind right. of thing, no one's really going to appreciate right. or value it. But the people who will know, oh, crap, that's actually a very valuable item. Yeah. That's interesting. And I, I got it through a family member, so I thought, you know what? Let me pass it on to my brother. He can enjoy it. He's going to put it into his office 
at mm. his uh, his business. Oh, so drinks at noon. It's going to be like coffee bar for everybody. You guys everybody ready to, to have some whiskey? There we go. I mean, there might be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they're going to enjoy it. And I'm really yeah. happy for him. So mm. I'm going to clear that out and uh, maybe get that over to him this nice. weekend. Yeah. Are you going to give him the alcohol? Well, that's a, that that's a very it? nice brotherly thing to do. I, um, I know there, how much you love that thing. There is a thing. lot of alcohol in there, and a lot of it know, has Dennis. been so, uh, not touched in six to eight years in some cases. Should you give that to your brother and his company for their work parties, or should you just keep that alcohol for yourself So, like, and build a treasure chest? And say you had three there. bottles of 151 that you only use. Dane, once. that's a lot of alcohol. <laughs> You should or, probably drink or, that yourself. Or a few bottles of Glenfiddich. Like Dane, I'm going to tell you again, or, maybe okay. don't give all the I'll give your brother the bar yeah. with, the t- with the seats. Yeah. You just find a box and yeah. put all that stuff somewhere. Perhaps yeah. in your new uh bar couch <laughs> that you bought. That Swedish bar designed couch. bar couch. You lift oh up the cushions, <clears throat> lots of space to put your bottles. Surprise, uh, secret glasses. refrigerator. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's going to be interesting. But I'll find a home for that stuff. It's Very all nice. right. It's Very not nice. like it's yeah. going to go bad. It's yeah. just dusty. It gets okay. dusty. So moving that over. But I'm really happy for him. I think it'll be fun for them to have like mm-hmm. a true like piece of actual legitimate historical furniture in their place. They can, it's a conversation piece for people who like to converse about that kind yes. of thing. But yeah, That's no, it's just something cool and unique. And work. he couldn't get it from anywhere else for a legit one like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm pretty pretty pleased with myself that I'm I, able to get I'm that. I'm proud to of you and, too. Yeah. So and it's it is freeing up some space in my uh, living room. So very nice. Yeah. That's nice. really that's it. Well, and I tested uh, and negative. Tested negative. I almost said tested. I tested negative on. Uh, uh, well, I got my test results back on the the weekend, like just before I came back here. So in the clear, all good for now. Who knows? But. The time being, nice. we're good, and you're good. And yeah. uh, Anthony, it sounds like you're good, too. So, Anthony, what did you do this weekend? Yeah. Oh, man. So Your uh, headphones no, dropped out. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, my. Did they? Oh, I'm good. There we go. I got you. I can hear you. He's adjusting. My thing there went off go. for some you reason. Good. That was weird. Go for um, it. on me. So, it was pretty, I mean, pretty lazy, man. I mean, basically, you know, it was, kind of, it was cold and rainy and things like that. And so, um, for the most part, did some stuff around the house. I finally cleaned out like this front closet room that needed to be done. Um, well, Katie actually did it. And then I just kind of watched and <laughs> nodded. And I said, yeah, that looks good. All right. And, and just keep going. Don't Great stop. Work. Right. You're on a roll. Go Let's team. Keep it going. Right. <laughs> and so I'm like, you know, while you're doing that, I'll make you a grilled cheese sandwich. And so oh, um, perfect. it was, it was just, it was just a lot of kind of hanging out. And um, I had to fix the, um, my rear drum on my Civic was sticking right on my driver's side and it's been sticking forever and I couldn't figure it out. Like it, it basically what happens is when, once it gets cold out and it's, you know, I have the e-brake up and I go to release the e-brake, the car won't like release. Basically it, it, it's just stuck, right? Like that, like the piston stuck. So I finally tore into it today, not today, but um, uh, on, over the weekend um, and pulled everything off. And what I kind of saw was, okay, um, I don't have a ton of life left in these rear pads, maybe a couple thousand miles or another couple months. There's not, there's not a ton. So, um, and they weren't, and I don't know too much about, um, um, uh, cars, drum brake pad, pad wear. So like, on, you know, like on a drum, right. You know, it's obviously circular. So these pads, I, I doubt that they're always going to you know wear evenly, but I can definitely tell that on my car, they had not worn evenly. There were certain sides that had big divots in them. There was other sides that kind of had, you know, that were really thin and kind of, you know, larger. I don't, I don't know how to explain your springs, it. But, uh, your um, springs and hardware probably need replaced hmm. on the drums. Cor- correct. And so, and that's what I was, and that's what I was kind of thinking, right? There's probably not enough tension there to set that, to set that, that shoe yeah. on there uh, like it should. So um, I popped everything off, checked it out. And um, I figured while I was in there, I might as well clean everything out. So I took brake cleaner, made like a, a cardboard apparatus around the, the wheel well there. And then, you know, sprayed some brake cleaner. And holy crap, man. I've never actually used brake cleaner on a drum brake before. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, that it's awesome, amazing. right? It yeah. literally, it cleans it's everything. Like, it'll go from looking like it is. 40 years old to looking like it is brand new in in seconds and so i was pretty amazed by that so cleaned everything out there 
and uh, sewed everything back up. But on the driver's side, I noticed that my actual piston on there was it was really caked. It was like caked in like an oily, uh, in like an oil mess as well as um, some extra residual brake dust. So I was checking it out. And I said, yeah, this looks like there's a small seat coming from the, this piston here. And, and lo and behold, there was. So I said, well, whatever. So I sprayed everything down, cleaned it all up, everything back up, and it solved my sticking issue. Basically, I think that that was so gunked up that that piston wasn't releasing all the way because of how much crap there was on there. Mm. So I, I fixed that, which is a good thing. But now I'm kind of under the, I don't under the stress of figuring out what I need to do for those brakes because basically I want to do a rear disc conversion on the on the rear there and get rid of those drums. Uh, and the best way to do that is from um, an Integra rear rear conversion. Basically, you take them off an Integra, the trailing arm, and swap them onto the Civic. Um, and that does the job, and you have to run the cables. Um, they also make conversion brackets for the drums to convert it from a drum to a disc. And I added up the cost on that, and it was going to come out to like almost $700. <laughs> and I could not justify that. I'm thinking yeah. like for a conversion kit to go to discs – why don't we go to the? Why worked? don't we go to the junkyard? <clears throat> so that's you and I me. We'll do might... some. We'll do some rear disc conversions. I'll grab some rear yeah. discs from a GT or yeah, a Tiburon, yeah. or yeah. well, the Elantra GTs had rear discs also. Ooh. Oh, okay. So okay. I'll get my stuff. You get your stuff. We'll build them yeah. out. We'll make them look good, and then I'll do the big brake kit that you have on your uh, Evo for the front. Uh, cause yeah, those will bolt, those that. will bolt right up on the Elantra too, I'm just, because the Elantra is basically an Evo underneath. I mean, basically. That's what I'm it trying is. to do the mental math here and think like, maybe look at it the way Anthony might look at it, which is say you do this rear conversion, you change the, the mm -hmm. drums for, you know, discs and all that $700. Is that $700 you're going to see on the resale value of the car? Not necessarily, maybe Absolutely to the right person, not. but you yeah. won't see it to a general buyer. The general buyer is going to look at the car and go, that's clean or nah, that's not clean. But in your cases, the car is already such a draw to ever people. say it's not clean. They're lit. Well, that's my point is <laughs> compared to any other Civic you see, everybody always says, oh my God, that's the nicest Civic I've ever seen. And you're like, oh, it's got little pock marks and it's got, and they go like, I don't care. It looks amazing. The drum brake thing versus the disc brake thing. Well, it's all about performance. Short thing. of a, a Honda guy, which like the really Honda Honda guys aren't going to care so much about the the paint quality and the well, other things. Here's so the deal: it's a totally different market. Anthony They're and I, not because gonna we're going to be autocrossing nice. these cars someday with you and your Jag, we need to be able to have make sure we have proper braking yeah. capability, adequate braking power, because we're not going to be able to keep power. up. My brakes are corners. as big as your wheels. <laughs> Yeah, okay. well, inch, well, baby. Yeah, yeah. Woo. you know it's not always the size, Dane. It's how yeah. you use it. That's but right. What I'm trying to say, getting back into this, right, is that you know it's more of like a it's it's kind of like a cost thing. Where I'm like, okay, this costs this much, but doing a conversion from an Integra, like if I were to go to a junkyard, I can probably get those trailing arms for I don't know, maybe twenty bucks a side or whatever it is, and then I still have to order all new rotors and I have to order all new pads. Uh, and I have to buy new brake lines, and I have to buy new e-brake e cables, right? So with everything said and done, I'm probably still going to be into this, like close to like maybe 400 bucks if I try to go with some sure. new things and, and make it not as janky, 400 or 500. Space but it out. It's it's just hard, man, because like I just think to myself, oh, I don't drive a car hard enough for disc I was going to say, do you drive it hard enough to justify being able to I, notice the difference? No, I, I don't. I don't at all. Like, honestly, I, I really don't. It, In a front-wheel drive car, of, no less. It, it's, Aesthetics. It's more yeah. of, it's more of the, the aesthetic of things. Yeah. It's the maintenance of things. And it's also <clears> just <throat> the fact that, you know, you, you have just substantially better braking power. And, and, sure. and really, drum brakes still stop extremely fast. It's more about the heat dispersion. Uh, that you get with with actual discs, and you know how basically um, you, you, they don't build up as much heat. They're more solid. They're easier to work on. You can run more aggressive pads. You have options in, in that front. But I mean, it, realistically, my dream for braking on that car would be rear discs on the back, and then Will Wood four piston calipers on the front um, that are red, and they look pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah. um, but that's like, but then I'm I'm going to be into the break like a thousand dollars on a car that I paid fifteen hundred dollars on. The amusing thing is, you have all that, that amazing braking power, and a D series is still under the hood. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. it's basically people looking, going, uh, oh well, he's never going to need those brakes. So, so what well, else so other than was, figuring was, out your braking? What what yeah. up, what else? So um, so sorry. Um, other than that though. Um, I watched a lot of documentaries on Kanjo racing in Osaka, Japan, oh. in, with Honda Civics. Yeah, and there's like a plenty, there's like a ton of documentaries on on YouTube about this. Very interesting stuff and in, in how they did this. Believe it or not, Dane, a lot of those guys that were actually racing those cars had D16s in their cars, but like Man. unrestricted. I was gonna I'm say they must like, have been <laughs> beating the like, ever loving snot dude, out of I'm those things. I'm talking like I'm talking like straight pipe. <laughs> you know, you know, with a, with a bigger cam and everything like yeah. that inside of them, and they're also running individual throttle bodies. Basically, they're opening up that car as much as they humanly possibly can without any worry about blowing it up because they know it's going to blow up eventually. So Guys, we're making 220 horsepower now. Look out. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not, the loudest. That's not what you want to do. It's the loudest 220 <laughs> you've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, it's a lawnmower on steroids. It, it, it does not sound good. But, um... No, so I did that, and then I ended up watching. Um, I watched Unhinged due to Dane's popular recommendation. Oh, you saw that? How um, was that? I haven't watched I, it. <laughs> I I was I was entertained, I guess, in like the weirdest way. Okay. Um, but the way the movie ends, you're just kind of like, well, I guess that's that. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. Like it just ends, and you're just like, well. I, I told really you, based like on my so assumptions, so. it's probably going to be a bad movie, but it looks like a fun bad movie. That's yeah. that's what so, it looked like. Um, so, well, yeah. So I did that, and then I think I and then I also watched the newest episode of the Grand Tour, which is mm-hmm. the, the, the uh, uh, yeah uh, did that Wild too. Hunt, uh, fantastic, a massive it hunt, was great. That was that mm-hmm. or a massive hunt. Yeah, uh, that was a good time. I had yeah. a good time. They watching did a good job it, with it, and um, I I, I think it just kind of sucks that 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 was all that they were able to produce in one year. <sighs> yeah, that's the thing. And I get what I, and I get what everything's <clears throat> going on, but I'm just like, man, that two hours or hour and a half—that's all you could give us in one year. It makes me sad because I just love watching them so much. Well, they felt like they were doing too much of retread with all of the stage shows and stuff, so they were trying to mix it up and just do specials because they thought that's what people wanted. Well, and we like the specials, but I mean, at least I mean, if they gave us a special every three or four months, I would be thrilled. If they gave us a special twice a year, I would be thrilled. Because well, I think in a normal year, time. yeah, you think in about the production year, of it and that. all that. That's what me and the kids did this yeah. weekend was we watched a massive hunt yeah. as well. And we really looked forward yeah. to it. Augie it absolutely loved when oh, Hammond sure. pulled up with his tank tread uh-huh. focus. <laughs> He's like, you yeah. can do that. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. like, that's what I would pick right there. That's what I, that's the car. <laughs> and then I'd he pick. saw how many problems came with oh, it. Oh, he didn't care. He was oh, just so excited okay. to watch that thing roll around <clears throat> and do stuff. And the kids had a blast. Uh, the, oh, my man. kids are at the point where they hear swearing and they get excited. Oh, t- and they're like, oh, Ooh. they said this. They said there the no no word. Some swearing in that. Ooh. And they, they heard it and they were like, oh. <gasps> He said this word, and so it's like, I love okay, seeing the cater the like hanging sideways in a rut and like kind of bouncing its yeah. way through the track. I was like, built that's himself, impressive. James. He built himself a sand rail. Yeah, is yeah, what he basically. built. Uh, <laughs> Dirt yeah. dragster. Yeah, no, it was. I would say that the on the like that was the one thing where when they were displaying all the cars, I was excited at first. I'm like, oh, nice, a, a Ford Focus RS, and. Um, in the perfect color too, in the beautiful blue color that we all like have seen in yeah. person, and it looks yeah. it's just oh, amazing. It's the most insane <laughs> blue there is. It, it's a well because it looks like a flat blue, and then you get up yeah. close, and there's all this metallic in it. And it's oh yeah, just wild a ton of looking. gold and silver um, and turquoise. It's beautiful. Well, and then they started getting it, you know, and they started getting into things, and it was more of like a matter of me thinking, well, as much as I love the Ford Focus RS, I don't know if this is the most reliable car for this journey that they're going on, <laughs> let alone the fact that he put tracks on these things, <laughs> on this thing, and I'm like, I really don't think that this car is going to make it, and I kind of had that feeling from the beginning, and I don't want to spoil it for people, but let's just say there's definitely more issues with that car than you would expect, and so, yeah. Definitely, I, I always I'm always interested in whatever car choices that they make, especially when it comes to more like realistic cars. Yeah, you know what I mean, like things that people can actually obtain. That's when I think it's it's very interesting. So, um, but other than that, though, I mean that was pretty much my weekend. I mean, I got some uh, some sweet uh, birthday presents from last week, so I want to say thank you to everybody that wished me a happy birthday last week. Um, it was an 
it was a it was an okay birthday. There was just oh. it's a it's a COVID it's 31. birthday. Thirty one. You know, Thirty one. Twenty twenty, baby. Yes. Yeah. It's it's twenty twenty. You know, birthdays can't get too exciting. You know, we I had dinner plans. The dinner plans didn't end up working out. Couldn't go to dinner, so I ended up just kind of doing something here around my house. And um, from there, it was just kind of a lot of hanging out. And um, I don't know. You know, that, I mean, that was pretty much it. My friend Z got me this really awesome poster. I would show you, but it's hanging up on the wall. Um, it's really cool. I posted it somewhere. It's somewhere on, on the interweb. But um, Oh, is that the two cars, two cars picture? Okay, yeah. Yeah, and so... Um, he got me a really, I can put, I can post it in the podcast discussion group. It's a really cool picture. And so, yeah. um, but yeah, that's it, man. I mean, a pre- pretty chill, pretty laid back weekend. And, uh, I don't know, Levi, what else did you do? Uh, well, I was, uh, as we all know, I had staff, mm. so, uh, dealt with that. And then on Wednesday, my, uh, lovely bride got sick with, uh, strep. That might be so, one of the most. Oh, so hey, it hit her hard so and much. fast on Wednesday. It's so horrible. Um, she was really scared that she had COVID. Yeah, uh, it's terrifying so, when you get it. Uh, we checked, and she was like, man, my symptoms aren't COVID-like. They're very much like I have strep throat. But she still had a fever, and she had a sore throat, which are two symptoms of COVID. So yeah. uh, we sent her, took her to the doctor to, to and set up an appointment. Um, and they had a very unique way of getting her in just to check. And they said, good news, you tested negative for COVID because they do a rapid test when, you yeah. do, when you're when you actually sick. Mm-hmm. They'll do a, like, you get your results within, like, five minutes. Probably like a blood test then. Kind of. And so they, they but it was in her nose. They, they swab her. Oh, okay. So they checked, and they're like, you tested negative for COVID, positive for strep. Oh. Uh, so they loaded her full of antibiotics. And because I had been going to that same, uh, f- our family pr- practitioner, and they had just prescribed me with antibiotics uh, for my staff. They said, "Tell your kids stay away." Yeah, for at least twenty four hours. Ever had strep? I have many times. Okay, yeah. but they were like, "Tell your kids to stay away." Uh, but because your husband's on antibiotics, he can take care of you, and <laughs> he's not going to be affected. So it was like I had like an immune yeah. shield on. <laughs> so I was just going in, getting her stuff, whatever yep. she needed. Um, but the kids, we were like, stay out of, like, stay away from mom, stay out of her room. Don't come in there, leave her alone for at least 24 hours. They're like, you have to have at least 24 hours of those, of the medication in her system for her to not be contagious anymore. So it was hard Wednesday night, Thursday was hard. Um, she slept most of the day. Uh, so not too bad. And then, uh, I slept on the couch a couple nights and then, um, but she was able to bounce back very quickly. And then this weekend, we just kind of took it easy. Mm-hmm. Had a nice, simple weekend. Friday night, she was feeling good enough, so Carly and I watched The Mandalorian mm. season finale. Uh, I just loved how it ended. It was perfect. Um, and okay, then, okay, really quick, Levi, let me, I got to stop you there. I haven't watched any of this new season yet, but I've watched all the <clears> other episodes. You need right? to watch this season. It's so much better is, than last this, season. So I, I have a couple questions for you. Maybe the audience will be interested in well. Is mm-hmm. there any lightsabers in this series? Yes. In this episode? Yes. There is. Yeah. That is interesting. Okay. Yeah, there are and... lightsabers in this second series. And a major character comes no back way. that you need to watch. Yeah. A couple major characters. A major character from where? From the first main From the whole from all of it. From the We're whole lore the of league. everything. From, <laughs> from Star Wars? Just the it's the world. I'm not telling him anything else other than the fact that there's a lot of yeah. callbacks, a lot of characters, a lot of stuff that comes back in the second season. You need to watch it. It's really good. It's like, really? it possibly, on one hand, it's probably perfect. On one hand, it's, it's what it's Star Wars should be. Fairly, it's not the most complicated thing to predict, but when it happens, you're still so excited by it. It doesn't matter. Well, it's, that's how really? all of it, all of it is amazing. It. Just watch yeah. it. Now, 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 does, now, do you have to be a Star Wars fan to appreciate these surprises that are coming in this? In this, no, not season? really. Oddly enough, no. this is a character who had popularity even outside of the main, yeah, fan base. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, it's that, really that helps good. Me, uh, it's, make my decision. It's really mm-hmm. good, and there's a lot. Of, I mean, they just it's perfect. So we it's watched fun. that. Carly and I watched it. It was really great. Uh, Saturday morning, me and the kids watched a massive hunt mm. together, had a good laugh about it. Uh, then, uh, 
last night. My parents Jeez, came over. Get it out. <laughs> yeah. Last night, my yeah. parents. Last night, my parents came over. Mm. Uh, brought all our Christmas presents, and we gave them our Christmas presents to them. Uh, my dad had his Christmas lights on the truck. Oh, I had my yeah. Christmas lights on the Suburban. And at the same time, some friends of ours stopped by to drop off cookies. So that was kind of surprise. We're like, oh, so hey, you've hey, got oh, enough so to feed. Also an army. got a bunch of treats. <laughs> yeah. Um, our neighbors brought treats over too. Um, so needless to say, a lot of treats. Augie was in wow. heaven. Oh boy. To the point that one of the treats was a full on tube of frosting for cookies. Oh. And Aug was no. like, oh, no. squeezing in his no. mouth. No. Just no. he was. Yeah, well, I had to like, we had to take crazy. it away from him. What happened to people just? Yeah. Eating good old fashioned cookie dough. Well, now they're just going straight to the frosting. Does, oh, has Augie oh. ever like blacked out on sugar? Like he just gets it and he just like you, you know, and you're like, oh my god, no. He's he wakes like, up two days no, later in the middle of the desert. It was close. <laughs> it was close, dude. That boy, like when he saw, so his friends got him like basically a gingerbread kit. Oh boy. But full of all these different types of candies that he hasn't seen before. And uh-huh. that kid was like, he was cracking every, like, tearing each bag open. Like, they were all little <laughs> Ziploc bags, and he had scissors, and he was cutting the what? Ziploc off. Just open Just the... to get to the <laughs> oh chocolates and stuff. And he was like, oh, oh. And I was like, slow down, slow down, that slow down. Sounds stop. Ravenous. Stop. And oh, yeah, it was, it, no. yeah, it was like, a, it, it's like an untrained animal and like a pile of raw meat. It's just meat. like having a little Wolverine in the oh, house. Oh, it was, yeah, gotta, yeah. I had to, like, it was crazy. <laughs> Um, but it was funny to watch. He was very excited. So, uh, but yeah, very simple, very easy. Yesterday afternoon, me and the kids sat down. Carly wasn't feeling very good still. So she took a nap. Uh, but we sat down, me and the kids and watched the Mandalorian. Okay. Yeah. Augie, uh, started crying at the end, which was really cute. Hadley just, I recorded both of them, but Hadley just kind of stared at the screen, made no. No emotional changes that's, except for a couple smiles. <laughs> uh, but that was it. Augie was like bawling. And I was like, I was recording Hadley. And then I was like, all of a sudden I hear him crying. So I'm like, try to record him. Yeah. So I made a little video for Carly, gave it to her. She posted it on uh, her stories yesterday. Uh, all mommy meme jeans and put some tags on it. And uh, so really cute. Um, but while we were at the store, I sent Nick a couple photos. I don't know if he can throw them up there, but hmm. uh, Augie created himself oh, a, a throne, throne of Pepsi and then said wow. to me, said to me, I'm the Pepsi King. Are you jealous? <laughs> and oh, I was man, like, I I'm sorry. The Pepsi wow. King sits about said, three boxes to your left. You're not the Pepsi King. You're the Mountain Dew King. You know, he's sitting on the Pepsi Zero, which <laughs> oh, is he's his on the favorite. Pepsi Zero. Okay, That's his favorite kind. But he moved those Mountain Dew over to that side so that he could create uh, a chair have an armrest yeah. gotcha yeah. yeah he was very excited about it and then hadley had to jump <laughs> in too because she yeah. thought that was a great I idea he had the little g tech uh, yeah yeah oh he was ready he to, they're ready to rock so <laughs> all in all very light easy simple weekend with the kids we just kind of hung out um all of us weren't doing too well so no. we all just stayed home and hung out and just sure. relaxed and that was what it was it was the nice thing i did however uh, Friday night was able to get the garage or Saturday. I was able to get the garage clean. Oh, uh, my garage nice. has looked like an absolute wreck. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, getting all the Christmas stuff out, hiding Christmas presents. Like anyway, I had to, it was just driving yeah. me nuts and I haven't been able to detail in my garage and I haven't had any cars. Uh, mm. so I figured I'd take this time to really get the place. We were cleaned supposed up. to have like a big snowstorm and then it just got yeah. too warm and it's just yeah, kind of turned into happened. a drizzle every other so, day. So, it's not bad detailing weather right no, now. No, it's all perfect. Considered. But I, but yeah, yeah, so I got my garage clean. So right. hopefully I'm going to put out a little post on Facebook. Yeah. See if I can drum up a little business, get some yeah. folks to bring While their the cars to me. Around, come get and your car uh, we'll go yeah. from there. So that was it. But no, pretty simple, great. pretty easy. Looking forward to this short week. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Q&A well, Thursday. So I think that'll be fun. So a couple things that we want to go over really quick here and yeah. just, just some business stuff, right? So just, we're going to kind of do some, 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 some shop talk. Ooh, yeah, um, let's do it. So, um, so we did have our, our, our six days of Christmas sale and that went fantastic, right? So everybody uh, looks like they stocked up on a ton of different things. I think the PNS day was everybody's favorite day. Yeah. Um, and they, everybody said that they were scoring everything from bean maker to break It was 30% off is, is what it was. To that rags was to riches, deals. which just came um, out. Yeah. <laughs> So that was one of our best deals that we've ever had on PNS. So I think people just absolutely loved it and soaked that up. And then I think the second 
favorite day was probably the Eagle Day, I'm assuming, the Eagle Edgeless Day, uh, and then maybe followed by the Color Lock Day. And so it was just every day kind of held something really cool. So I'm hoping that yeah. everybody stocked up on something that they can use um, throughout the winter or just use them as gifts, right? I think uh, we're, we're, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to push that to, you know, to kind of spread the word of, of, of microfiber and detailing and stuff like that um, through just literally gifts. I mean, people um, are not going to complain about getting microfiber towels, especially if they like their car. I mean, and that's how you know when you're getting older, when you get excited about new microfiber towels, you know, as a, as a Christmas present, you know, that and that and Dixon flannels, of course. Yeah, of um, course. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, in terms of upcoming sales, right, um, so we don't have anything planned in terms of a Boxing Day sale, from 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 what I know at this point in time. Um, but I think sometime around January we'll probably have another sale again. Um, wow. Something cool, you know, something to make things fun. The best way to know, yeah, the best way to to, to find sign out, up for, yeah, is to sign up for what Levi? the newsletter, the details. The newsletter. Go to the ragcompany dot com and sign up for the newsletter. That's the easiest way then you will be notified if we have a sale. So say you're somebody who doesn't know where to find this so-called newsletter. Where do you find it? You go to the ragcompany.com. Okay. And it pops right up. up It's a pop-up. Yeah. Okay. So what if it doesn't pop up? What if I have a pop-up? Clear your browser history and your cache and then reload the ragcompany.com. There's another thing you could do. Pops right up. Or you can just scroll uh, to the bottom. There you go. Scroll to the bottom of the page and it's right there in your email. Scroll to the bottom. That's what I was trying to like steer (laughs) towards. I was going to get there. (laughs) Yeah. But you scroll to the bottom. It says (laughs) right there, sign up for the newsletter. Uh, If you sign up. That's how you know. That's where you are notified. Yep. The moment a sale goes live, we post the Nobody we send finds an email out, out sooner than the people on the mailing list. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Not even people on yeah. social media. Like those posts don't go out until a little ways after. Well, they don't even hear it on the podcast half the time. No. Sometimes we'll do it live on a QA, we'll say it, but sometimes it goes out before. Yeah, they catch us off guard and they're like, oh, by yeah. the way, it's live now. We're like, yeah. whoa. Yep. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> so you've got to sign up yeah. and you need to sign up. Yep. So. So okay. Continue. So then that I guess really does so, so so <laughs> that yeah that was kind of it for in terms of like the sales talk. Um, another thing, business related. Yes. Do you want to be a grand ambassador? Do Ooh, you? Yes? I do. If the answer is yes, then you need to go apply now because the link is available in the Instagram description page. And so if you're a listener of the podcast, you love Instagram, you like posting on social media, and you feel like you can represent the rag company, right. and you want to win a bunch of cool swag then please, please, please apply in the link in the bio. Um, yeah. Q1, Grand Ambassadors, dinner. getting uh, ready. Correct. Yeah. And so we're going to be closing. I can't remember what, what the cutoff date was. I had it up just a minute ago. But um, it'll be available, I think, all the way to the 27th. And I think that's when we're cutting things yeah. off. Uh, and then we're going to be announcing sometime around the beginning of January uh, the winner. And then we also have to announce the Grand Ambassador of the Year. Uh, 2020. As well, which is also which is also exciting. And so... Remind um, people the Grand Bastard of the yeah, Year. What like what all goes into that, Anthony? So for the Grand Bastard of the Year, this is the one Grand Bastard out of the forty that has, has stood out above the rest, has kind of gone above and beyond to make fantastic posts, you know, video content, you know, sharing things, you know, uh, kind of just promoting the ride company in, in, in the best way possible um, without well, you know. And they've done it for the whole year. A sales guy, I guess. Yeah, but they've done yeah, it they've for done the, done whole the whole year. year. You know, just well, because their quarter so ended is, doesn't mean that they're done. They can, they can yeah, continue yeah. to. So, but I mean, so for example, right, there's four quarters in the year, right? So the grand bastard of the year could be somebody from quarter three, could be from quarter two, could be from quarter one. Or if there's one grand bastard in quarter four that just freaking killed the game, right? More so than anybody yeah. else has. They right? stand a then, chance then like anybody else. Four. Yeah. So it, so it's kind of a fair system there that we've kind of created. And so, um, but overall, though, I would say that um, we have some great, uh, we have some great contenders, man. I mean, I'm I'm kind of overwhelmed because just in this last quarter of quarter four, we've had some people just go above and beyond and have kind of just you know really done things well. And so we've always done a thing where we have our Grand Master of the Year, and then we have four runner ups that basically um, follow up to the Grand Master, and these are people that we kind of want to highlight for certain things, right? Maybe if there's a person that had the best story post or there's a person that had um, the most creative video content, wh- whatever it may be, but we also like to reward them. So while there is one grand prize, uh, there is another four um, good prizes as well. Yeah. So basically there's five chances to win something pretty cool from us at the rag company. So, yep. um, but yeah, 
Um, so please apply. If you haven't applied, share it with a friend. If you guys know of any cool, you know, influencer type of people, if you guys know that you love their cars or love detailing and you feel like they would represent us, then please send them the link that's in our description and have them apply to be a grand ambassador. And so, um, so far, I mean, we have a ton of applicants, but uh, more the more the better. If you've applied before well, and you've gotten rejected, pl- apply again, right? Don't well. Don't and for those you. for those wondering, you know, last year uh, Zaya Dinka won our Grand yeah. Ambassador of the Year, and his prize pack that he won Nuts. was unbelievable. And Nuts. this year, our prize pack is shaping up to be just as, if not better. Wow. And the prize pack that Zaya won. So if you guys are just wondering, hey, what is the Grand Ambassador of the, pro- of the Year prize? Go back, take a look at some of the stuff that there, Zaya won. There was, and uh, I mean, it's a it was crazy. Yes. And already yeah. this year, I mean, we've got stuff that's already starting to arrive here in the building, and we get everything together. We'll catalog everything. We'll take photos of it so that you guys can see. But check out last year's price package for thousands of dollars yeah. it was prices. insane not, not it was like insane. oh you got like five hundred dollars no this is like thousands this is let's just say of, zaya was able yeah. to make that it was much easier for him to make that transition from mobile detailer to building himself a shop and getting yeah. himself into getting himself into a with detail shop it, it was like literally the stuff. deciding factor like oh now i've made it okay right. now i can do this and yeah that's what helped him make that leap so makes a big difference yeah. there's yeah. there's so. some fantastic stuff inside that inside that uh so that grand prize and thanks to Levi for reaching out to everybody and getting yes. all of the everybody to Excellent kind of pitch work, in, sir. donate for this prize. And so, um, and we'll have to do like a special shout out in an upcoming episode, uh, thanking all the people for, um, for all the, the donations for oh, the absolutely. prize. And so, yeah. um, so I would expect that we're going to be announcing the grand Bastard of the year, probably within the first week, week and a half uh, of January, uh, mainly for the fact that it just, we have to roll out the new Grand Bastards for 2020 or for 2021 in January and announce them, right? And then it's kind of the deciding factor and the research factor. And so we want to kind of make it, we want to separate things a little bit where you're not getting all your cake at once. We want to space it out so you get a yeah. bite here and a bite there. So that's right. Um, oh, I guess anyway, a big uh, thing about that to yeah. point out is just the fact people ask us all the time sponsor me sponsor me it's like well that is the closest thing we offer to a sponsorship program that is our sponsorship program so if you're looking for that get in the running get it yeah um and then outside of that um we are uh, continuing to um test some new products out as always and so we're testing things out and we are hoping to get um we're probably within the next week or two uh fingers crossed um some more uh coach coming products that we can bring in for some testing um, to see where they fit in our line. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of looking forward to some upcoming things going on. So um, outside of that, though, I think that's, pre- that's pretty much it from the business side. Um, Levi, uh, what are your Christmas plans? Dane, what are your Christmas plans? Go. Mm, go ahead, Levi. <sighs> Hanging out at home. <laughs> nice. I know, this year. Okay. That's literally all we're Did doing. You- very low key. Is there anything <laughs> that you asked for, anything that you want for Christmas, no. whether you ask for it or buy it yourself? No, as a 40 year old man, I don't ask for anything anymore. <laughs> so I just get stuff mm-hmm. from my kids and my wife will find me something that I have talked about that I like. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this year I already know what she got me. Uh, it's an air fryer. So I'm Ooh. very excited to uh, air fry some stuff. Oh my God. Levi's um, going to change your life. So really very is. excited to, very it. excited to open that up, but that's really it. Man, it so seems like everybody's simple. on that air fryer kick. Very around. easy. Yeah. I like food it's preparation good, equipment. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm See, all about. See, you take the food Dane. route for me. It's all about the comfy clothing. So my parents know, get him like PJs, get him fuzzy socks, get him a sweater, get him a vest, oh. like whatever. Like, I love that. I'm excited by those I can't things. Wait till they buy and as some, a kid, uh, they, they would always laugh to like, you're like one of the only kids who Dane actually Hannon. likes getting like clothing for Christmas because it's usually just something fuzzy yeah. and warm. And it's something to remember by, you know, it's mm. just a nice little thing. So I like that. But, you know, yeah, there are some years where you're like, oh, I'll do video game concert, whatever. It's like, I'm a little older now. It's not. A, I'll get that myself. But w- w- with the thing being delivered, it's a piece of furniture. It could be something simple. could be what complicated. What if it's comfy? I don't know. Oh. I imagine it's comfy. What if but it's comfy? It turns out to be a table or something. It's, that, a, it's I don't a very know. hard, spiky so, table. You're like, that is not yeah. a comfortable item. Mom. I I will probably have an answer by the time Q and A Thursday nice. rolls around, and I can tell you guys. Now what we're gonna, gonna you're gonna go have some seafood fantasia at your parents' house. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna we're gonna go over to Carly's mom's house, have dinner. Nice. That's about it. Anthony, what yeah, are you doing for you? Christmas? I'm gonna be going to my parents' house. Yes, mm-hmm. and so going over there, hanging out, and um, 
and just I dude, I think I think honestly I think it's just gonna be me, um, Katie, my mom, my dad, and I think that's it. I think I mean I think that my my sister is my sister works at Dutch Bros and she and so does her husband. Her husband's actually out of town. My my brother in law he travels for Dutch Bros and so he's gone for Christmas. And I think my sister is working that day because I think they get paid like a, a a decent chunk for working on Christmas or something. I was just so saying that better be worth that. it. <laughs> so I think so. I think it's worth it. And so I think she, that's what she's doing. But I think so. I think it's literally just going to be like four of us. Um, and in terms of what I asked for, the thing the thing I want out of out of pretty much anything, I want one of those damn. It's I think it's called a souve souvi oh, souvi souvi. Um, Swat of <laughs> I just I just Swat I've never tried one, is? and oh, I have like I've always wanted it. Whatever the heck it is, man. It's just the damn uh, yeah. water in a thing. Yeah, you it's like, boil it's like you boil water. some meat in a sack. Well, Suave body well, soap. In, in Swat of so, me. I, <laughs> I told Katie. I said, hey. This is what I want. I want like this. It's like a it's like a hundred bucks. That this is it would make me so happy. You know, I'd use it all the time. And she had to ask me. So this is something that boils water at a consistent temperature for a period of time. And I said absolutely. She's like, why can't you just do that on the stove with boiling water? And I said, well, I don't know how to check check the the temperature of the water. And she said, I'll buy you a thermostat for two dollars. And I said, well, but then how do I keep it consistent? She's like, you just leave it on the stove for two hours. And I said. That's asking you're far too a lot much of sense of you. right now. <laughs> it's, it's too far no, my my, far my far uncle. Like, I know what you're talking like, about. I know make, what you're talking don't about. Don't make this much sense. I, I I want my damn machine. Is what I want. My uncle got one of those, and actually, I it seems to work really well for them. So there they we like go. it. But, All right. You know, if you get that, it's that's also great. Uh, Ivan gotta... Lacroix's <laughs> favorite item of 2020. Mm. Is that is that swat of e thing? Is it? Or whatever it is. Yeah, it's, it's one not, of his it's favorite. It's sous vide. It's it's not swat of e. Swat of e. Sous vide. Sous vide. Sous vide. That's what it is. Well, what's right. funny is that his wife's name is Sylvie. So Sylvie yeah. oh, and sous vide. There you go. Yeah, That's why he likes it. So. It is. Roger, right. Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Victor? Let's, okay, let's so. bring it home, Dave. <laughs> this is it. We are done for the day. That's it. Heading home. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, until next time. We'll see you on Thursday. Q&A Thursday. We'll talk more then. See ya. (laughs) See you guys. See ya.